Mount Hood volcano of Oregon has had 114 earthquakes in the past two days. It's one of the U.S.'s 18 volcanoes most likely to erupt. This is what the U.S. geologists told us the uh, beginning of last year. In the meantime, we know that there is magma mixing causes, uh, causing the Mount Hood explosive eruptions. Now, uh, a little bit later on, we're going to take a look at the actual earthquakes in that area. But uh, they seem to have been increasing, especially after we've had the California quakes over 1,907 today in the 24-hour period. And we've had over 114 in the past two days hitting Mount Hood. USGS says 18 U.S. volcanoes are ready to blow. We have a whole array of them in, uh, as we know, in California, Mount Shasta, Lassen Peak, Medicine Lake, Volcano Long Valley Caldera, and that has been having a lot of earthquakes lately, Ubibi Craters, Coso Volcanic Field Moderate, and Sultan Buttes, high to very high, and some of them have erupted the past thousand years, UBB craters, for example, as that's the area where the South California earthquake swarm is sort of heading into. It's heading up from Ridgecrest towards that area. Long Valley volcanic region erupted a thousand within the last thousand years and is high to very high threat level. And Clear Lake, high to very high, Lassen Peak, Shasta. Medicine Lake, but we also have in Oregon Mount Hood, Crater Lake, and South Sister. In Washington, we have Mount Baker, Rainier, St. Helens, and Glacier Peak. So Mount Hood is definitely in that list. There's a strange magma mixing caused is uh, causing Mount Hood's explosive eruptions. First of all, it's uh, from what the USGS says. Mount Hood's Oregon's highest peak, an active volcano of the Cascade Range, located about 80 kilometers east of Portland metropolitan area. Volcanism occurs at Mount Hood and other Cascades arc volcanoes because of the subduction of the Juan de Fuca plate off the western coast of North America. Mount Hood is a long-lived volcanic center. It's erupted recurrently during the past 500 years, 500,000 years. And geologic evidence records uh, eruptions from similar volcanoes at about the same site back more than a million years ago. Geologic studies of Mount Hood region identify products of numerous local volcanoes that post-date the great floods of the basalt lava, the Columbia River basalts, that flowed down ancestral valleys to the Columbia River between 16 and 15 million years ago. Local volcanoes range from long-lived andesite to desitic volcanoes. Present-day Mount Hood has grown episodically with decades to centuries of frequent eruptions, separated by quiet periods lasting from centuries to more than 10,000 years. In the recent past, the volcano has produced two significant eruption periods, one about 1,500 years ago and the other during the late 18th century, so that was pretty recent. Mount Hood eruptions produce andesite and dacic lavas of a much narrower range of composite than its neighbor to the northwest, Mount St. Helens. Uh, we have Mount Hood's history, swift landslides called debris avalanches of various sizes occurred. The largest ones removed the summit and sizable parts of the volcano's flanks and formed lahars that flowed to the Columbia River. Large debris avalanche occurred infrequently and are usually triggered by eruptive activity. And smaller ones, not associated with eruption, occur more frequently. Typically, these are triggered by failure of rocks that have been altered and weakened by acidic volcanic fluids or by weathering. Now, we know that it is a stratovolcano. 
a stratovolcano known as a composite volcano is a conical volcano, like a cone built up by many layers, strata of hardened lava, tephra, pumice, and ash. Unlike shield volcanoes, the stratovolcanoes characterized by steep profile with a summit crater and periodic intervals of explosive eruptions and effusive eruptions, although some have collapsed summits, craters called calderas. The lava flowing from stratovolcanoes typically cools and hardens before spreading far due to high viscosity. The magma forming this lava is often felsic, having high to intermediate levels of silica, rhyolite lava, that is, it flows very slowly, with lesser amount of less viscous mafic magma, and extensive felsic lava flows are uncommon, travel as far as 15 kilometers. Stratovolcanoes are sometimes called composite volcanoes because of their composition, composite stratified structure built up from sequential outpourings of erupted materials. Now, going to the magma, mixing causes Mount Hood's explosive eruptions, according to Live Science, and the article was from uh, Our Amazing Planet, which is a sister to site to Live Science. Mount Hood, Oregon's tallest mountain and part of the Cascade Volcanic Arc, goes off like a bomb that explodes after two different liquids are mixed together. Mount Hood has not had a major eruption in hundreds of years, but once two different types of magma below the volcano are mixed, the eruptions can happen within weeks or months. This is according to a new study. The findings, detailed in August 1st online edition of journal Nature Geoscience, will help scientists better understand the nature of Mount Hood's past and future eruptions, as well as other volcanoes that erupt by similar mechanisms. This includes a large number of world's active volcanoes. These data will help give us a better roadmap to what a future eruption of Mount Hood would look like and what will take place before it occurs. This is what geoscientist study team member Adam Kent of Oregon State University said. He said it should also help us understand the nature of future eruptions and what risks they will entail. Now, what about this mixing magma? Geologists are already able to use things like gas emissions, the chemistry of hot springs, ground deformation, local earthquakes, and other data to help predict when a volcanic eruption is imminent, Kent said, and the new findings will add even more data towards that, that goal. There are two types of magma, and these two types of magma, or molten underground rocks, often involved in volcanic processes are mafic magma, which has less silica, and is more fluid and felsic magma, which has more silica and thicker toothpaste-like consistency. A third type of magma, called andesite, named after the Andes Mountains, Andes Mountains, where it's often found, is composed of a mixture of felsic and mafic magmas. Okay, that's the andesite magma. The rocks around Mount Hood scientists say, are almost exclusively formed from andesitic magma, and research suggests that when mafic magma intrudes into and mixes with a layer of its thicker felsic counterpart, often occurs just prior to an actual eruption. They say the intense mixing of these two types of magma causes an increase in pressure and other effects, and it's usually the trigger for an eruption. And Kent explained, but this process does not happen in all volcanic events. In the Cascade Range, Mount Hood appears to be one volcano where antacidic magma and recharge-driven eruptions are dominant. This may be because of local crustal conditions, even though the Cascade Range is likely to melt, is linked to melting rock from the Cascadia subduction zone. Some parts of the crust are more difficult than others for magma to move through. Mount Hood appears to be in a region where it takes the extra pressure of magma mixing to cause an eruption. Mount Hood's past and future, Kent said that researchers study these processes not only to improve their ability to predict eruptions, 
and to recognize precursors to an eruption, but also to assess possible ore deposits associated with volcanic activity to learn more about the fundamental dynamics of volcanic processes. Mount Hood's mixing behavior is somewhat different than that of most other Cascade Range volcanoes, including Mount Hood's nearby uh, explosive neighbor, Mount St. Helens. Mount Hood, 11,249 feet tall, highest mountain in Oregon, and the fourth highest in the Cascade Range. The last major eruption was about the late 1780s, and the effects of this eruption were viewed by members of the Lewis and Clark expedition in 1805. And Mount Hood is considered a potentially active volcano in the Oregon volcano, most likely to erupt, although the chances of that are still small, they said. And now let's go take a look at what, it, what the activity is, what activity is happening, so you can have a better picture of uh, where these earthquakes are and how big they are. Here we are at USGS, Volcanoes Mount Hood. We're at monitoring at, uh, it comes off on earthquakes. And you can see that in the past two days, basically, we've had 114 earthquakes. That's a huge amount, of course. And uh, they range anywhere from 0 0.8, 0 0.5, to uh, perhaps 2 point, this is 2 magnitude, 2.1, 2.4. Uh, oh, they just updated this. We just had a... No, that's a depth, sorry. The ma this magnitude is uh, 2. Yes. Okay, that's a depth. Okay, so you can see that there... That's another 2 over there. This, we had 2.1. And it goes all the way down. The number on... On the right is the magnitude, and the left, sorry, the left is magnitude, the right is a depth. A huge number of them. They're continually going. And um, that's it right there. That's what it looks like. Okay, let's go in again. That's our Mount Hood. There we are. Basically, it's south of the cone of the crater. There you are. Now, let's go to our activity. This is the activity in uh, Southern California, where we've had basically 1,907 quakes in the past 24 hours. This is a tremendous amount of activity, and you have to uh, understand that they could not possibly plot all the actual earthquakes that take place. There must be at least twice as many as that. Or if we're talking about close to 2,000 in a day, there must be at least 4,000. Now, this is for the past week. The blue were the past day, and the red is the past hour. 3.9 magnitude just now. Uh, we've had a couple of them that were even higher. I think I saw 4.1 uh, somewhere around here. That's a 4.2 today. 4.2. Okay, and the red ones, as we said, are the past tower, 3.1. And they're stopping in this area, which seems to be a rise. You see that there? That's a magma plume down there. 1,630 meters height. This is in the coastal volcanic field, as we said. And they, this junction, okay, they're, they're going towards, it seems like this, if you remember, uh, on July 4th and July 5th, this line was basically an L shape, remember? Like this, an L shape. Well, that L shape has turned into a, an I. It's pointing towards, sort of creeping up towards 
the northwest and it's heading towards the Inyo and the Mono area of uh, not far from Long Valley, which is right here. These quakes. Tom's place is Long Valley Caldera. We can see it here. There you go. Tom and of course Mammoth Lakes are Long Valley Caldera. We had quakes here as well, but they don't show them here. Um, that's a volcanic area quite active as well. Now let's go to Mount Hood. Sorry. Up more. Okay, it doesn't show them. For some reason it does not show them. Let's go here. This would show it. Okay, this one shows it, you see. Okay, uh, it says 18 in the past hour. Okay, 14, 15, 16, there must be another two somewhere else. The little ones here, one and two, right there. Okay, very little. So they're 18, not 14, 18. This is the Mount Hood area. Okay. As you can see, almost two Richter. So something is happening there. Uh, we have a lot of activity in Mount Hood, which is, of course, as we said, an active volcano. One of the volcanoes that is supposed to be one of the 18 U.S. volcanoes that are a threat and are ready to blow. So we have to keep an eye out, see what's happening there, and see what uh, the USGS has to say about this. Right now, they have nothing to say about this. Basically, everything is normal. I didn't look in this, but uh, okay, yeah, everything is normal for them. So we'll keep a lookout for this because, of course, to have 18 quakes in one day, in one day, okay, uh, the uh, previous listing we had was for the quakes having to do with 14 in two days. That's not the situation. That's not the situation. It's 18 in one day. Okay, why is it not opening? Let's see. Here we go. Okay. Now, that's not the case. We've already seen that we had 18. You see, that's the thing. They don't report, they don't record all of them, unfortunately. That's it. Mount Hood, 18. Okay, you see it yourself. And, um, and of course, California, as you can see, is uh, Indonesia. California is, as you can see, rocking. Out of the, uh, what is it, 2,122 quakes, we say we saw that in California. Oh, what happened to here? What happened here? What is this? Oh, that's my hood. Yeah. What about the other ones we saw? The three. Oh, yes, that's in Montana. That's basically in the Yellowstone area. Okay, they've gone down. They were a little bit more today, uh, a few hours ago. Okay, so. Uh, as you can, oh, we also had 36 north of San Francisco and about 1,800 in the um, Ridge Crest area, 
which is, of course, crisscrossed by two different faults. The 6.4 was on one fault, and the 7.1 was on another fault, crisscrossing the fault that gave the 6.4 magnitude. So we'll keep a look at on this, again, concerning Mount Hood, because something is going on there. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.